Please tell me this is better now. <laughs> I hope the connection's better. Yo. <laughs> oh my god, no, I'm not gonna show my nails, they look ratchet. <laughs> oh boy. Um, this is off to a great start, you guys. Um, is it better? Hey, works great. Okay, good. I think maybe it's because my low battery. I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, um, friends coming in. Hello. My hair is a mess. <laughs> Hi, mamita. Hola, ¿cómo están? Lo extrañamos. Tienen que pasar por aquí pronto. <laughs> yes, it's working. Yes. Okay, cool. Oh my god, yay, that makes me happy. It's my birthday soon. It's crazy to think my birthday soon. Now it's working. What the hell happened? Like, I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know. Maybe it was because it's like low battery and it wasn't... I don't know. My phone's incompetent. Anyway. Well, your Spanish is better than mine. What are you talking about? My Spanish is always better than yours. Go away. <laughs> um... Guess who finally moved into a house? <gasps> Madeje! I'm so happy for you and your family. Go off. Okay, go get your house. Um, what was I saying before? Yeah, I have no idea what my phone's doing. My phone's incompetent. I'm back in LA next week. Let's hang. Let's do it. Jay, we gotta do something fun. What are we gonna do? Because LA just seems to get more boring and boring. Oh my god. The weather's really nice though. Except for today. The sun's out today and I don't really like it. Winter fruit, we need a hang. I know we need a hang. That'd be fun. I don't know. No sé bien inglés. No importa si necesitas que te, tradu que te traduzca algo, me, me avisas. Um, six flags. No! No, brother, no! An escape. I, I, might do, I might be able to do an escape room. Yeah. I am definitely not doing six flags. Yeah, no, that, that's it's a little scary. It's a little scary. Because, I mean, I like I like adventures, and I like risking my life occasionally, but not in that way. You know what I mean? Um, do I not like roller I don't. I like, I'm very picky with roller coasters. If it's like loop-de-loop, -loop, like going upside down, like going like from here to here, no. Definitely not. No, I'm, I don't know. Um, yeah, I would totally go bungee jumping. Makes sense, right? Um, Alayla is boring with me usually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have to find something to do. There'll be something, like a cafe or something too. It doesn't even have to be like, let's go to a freaking roller coaster ride. Um, 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 um. ¿De dónde hablas español? Yo soy de Colombia, que papá eres. Gracias. Saludos hasta Colombia. Y yo nací en Venezuela y mi familia es de Cuba, so, eh, joder, <laughs> do you love me, are you bad, say you not, stop, ok, um, no, o sea, español fue mi primer lenguaje y entonces después me mudé a los Estados Unidos como tenía seis años y ahí fue que aprendí el inglés, my hair looks so good, thank you, girl you are snatched, y'all better stop, Y'all hyping me up too much. Okay. <laughs> no, my hair, this is my natural hair. Mainly the ones, like, close to the roots. Like, you see where it's, like, frizzy and curly? That's my natural hair. But I did the worst thing a girl could ever do, and I got a keratin treatment. Um, the first time I got it, it wasn't really bad. Actually, it was okay for a few months, and I needed it in that moment um, because I was on set, and it would just make the time easier because my hair, to style it literally any way, takes, like, an hour least an hour and so I got a keratin treatment just to make it easier and it worked the first time the second time I got it at a different place and I don't know what the hell they put in my hair now it's like it's been like two years that since I got it and so the roots and everything are like back to normal and the frizz it's back to normal but see like the rest is straight it's really weird I don't like it <laughs> so love your shirt thank you I got it yesterday Yesterday was Sunday, right? No, yesterday was Monday. I got it on Sunday at Urban Outfitters. So, yeah. Um, 
You should watch Brokeback Mountain. It's so good. Oh, what is that? I'm, I'll watch it. Lily, hola, hola, Luisa. Menos de... Oh, qué loca. I love your outfit. Thank you. Um, I really like this shirt. I got it Sunday at Urban Outfitters. My grandma, as a gift, got all of us, like, things, like, little nameplates with our name, like... And these jeans I like, but I don't like. In the sense that I was wearing a skirt. Estaba diciendo tu cabello, pero está bien bello, así que sí. Gracias. No, estaba diciendo que mi pelo natural es este. Como todo esto aquí, que está rizado, como cerca de, de mi cabeza, todo esto aquí, todo eso es natural. Pero lo demás es como... Está así como tipo planchado. Porque yo agarré un tratamiento de queratina, que ni sé para qué lo agarré. La primera vez que yo lo agarré... Estaba bien. O sea, me ayudó mucho. Porque me tenía el pelo calmado. Se me fue el, todo este volumen. O sea, no era así planchado. Pero me ayudaba mucho. O sea, para, por ejemplo, me lavo la cabeza. Y entonces ya cuando se seca está... Se ve decente y puedo salir a la calle. Y no tengo que hacer tanto. Y me ayudaba en el... Cuando yo iba a grabar. Pero la segunda vez que agarré la queratina. Fui a otro lugar. Y no sé qué... Qué porquería me echaron en el pelo que dos años después todavía, o sea, se me ha ido desde aquí, de toda esta parte de aquí, cerca de la cabeza, todo esto, ¿ves? Porque está rizado y tiene este volumen, pero entonces todo lo demás está así, like, ¿eh? Todavía está planchado. ¡No! No sé qué me echaron. Um, uso pantel y notarás la diferencia. <ríe> Por favor. No, mira, agarré un tratamiento nuevo, eh, japonés, que el shampoo, el, con, el, condiciona, el condicionador, el conditioner, ah, Spanglish, uh, y un tratamiento como, como en el medio de los dos, que te echas como, te echas el shampoo, te echas agua, después te echas el tratamiento en las puntas, y después te echas el conditioner, todo es de miel, como el 50% es miel de Nueva Zelanda, que eh, se llama Manuka, y es espectacular. Para mí cuando estoy ronca, eso es lo que me quita todo. Y para la piel es espectacular. Soy yo decía, oh, este, esta miel es espectacular, me la voy a echar en el pelo. Y tiene miel como pura japonesa, y tiene miel no sé qué cosa. Y entonces cuando yo vi todos los ingredientes, yo dije, Dios mío, esto está espectacular. Así que voy a probar eso y a ver si me arregla, me arregla mi problema. O mínimo me hace crecer el pelo y que no se vea tan seco. So, pronto les voy a dejar saber si me trabajó. Y si sí, si, les posté una foto a ver si... Lo pueden encontrar en algún lugar y lo usen ustedes. No sé. Si les interesa. Um, I just went on a whole rant in Spanish. Because um, people were asking me about my hair. Um, I already told you kind of how my hair is. But um, I went to this. Um, here in LA, there's this a place called Little Tokyo. And there's this really, really good places for like eating and um, shopping. And have like all the like really good like Japanese brands. And then in the market that I went to. They had um, also like a skincare area, hair care area, all that bunch of stuff. So I tried to see because the past um, hair care products, Japanese that I've used before, were really, really good. Um, and so I wanted to see what they had because I had run out. And I found this one that was like shampoo, treatment, it's Spanglish, I know. And then after the treatment, like for your ends, then you put the conditioner. And I saw it and it was like 50% Manuka honey from New Zealand, which is really, really, really good. Um, pure Japanese honey and other type of honey. And then I saw the other ingredients and they were really, really good. So I was like, let me try it. So I'm gonna let you know how that goes. If it's good on my hair, I'll let you know. I don't know. Um, I think it's good for all hair types. So hopefully it'll be good on mine. Um, I hope it doesn't take the, like, I just, I hope it doesn't take the volume out of it. That's all I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> Hay veces que te sale lo venezolano. <laughs> pues, no sé. Fíjate, porque es que yo me salí de Venezuela cuando tenía seis años. Uh, wait, girl, we need your hair recommendations. Thick hair struggles, I know. <laughs> um, I'm going to let you know how it goes for me. Um, with that product that I told you about, and then I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. If it if it does something good, if it doesn't, then you know. Um, but bueno, lo que decía, yo me fui de Venezuela a los seis años. Um, 
¿Por qué usas doblaje si puedes hablar español? Eso no tiene que ver nada que ver conmigo. Yo hago el show original y el show original es en inglés. Y ellos, por ejemplo, si hacen un doblaje en español, creo que usualmente buscan los actores en México. O buscan los actores en otro lugar. En realidad nunca me han llamado a mí para hacer los dos trabajos. So, por mí, bien. Si en fin yo hablo español y me pueden pagar extra. Que bueno, puedo pagar la renta. Pero no, no. No muchos actores como hacen su propio doblaje, no sé por qué. Como dije, no, nadie me ha llamado para eso. Pero bueno, como decía, a ver si termino la oración. Eh, um, me fue de... Te sale lo venezolano, en realidad se te salen expresiones venezolanas cuando hablas con el acento cubano. De vez en cuando, porque es que mi familia vivió muchos años en Venezuela. Y de ahí de vez en cuando, como uno, claro, pasa... 15, 20 años, y entonces dices una que otra cosa, como mi abuela dice chévere o cosas así, pero la familia entera es cubana. So, yo nada más estuve en Venezuela hasta los 6 años, y entonces en realidad uno, o sea, me acuerdo de varias cosas, pero tampoco es que me pude apegar mucho a la cultura. Y después llegué a los Estados Unidos y fui a Miami, donde en Miami la, la mayoría de la, eh, de, la, de la población es cubana. So, uh, mi familia es cubana, el alrededor era cubano, mis amigos eran cubanos y además la mayoría del tiempo lo que hacía era hablar en inglés. Son una mezcla de cubano y inglés. So, de vez en cuando yo pienso que yo tengo más acento cubano que venezolano. Eh, hey, babe, hi Taylor. O sea, ¿cómo te gustaría volver? Imagínate, claro que me gustaría volver. Eh, porque es que desde que me fui de, desde los seis años nunca más he regresado eh, porque era dedicarse a, a aprender el lenguaje a, a, a agarrar trabajo aquí a, a hacer bien en la escuela a acostumbrarse es un cambio muy grande eh, no es que lo abandoné ni tampoco que no me gusta ni nada de estas cosas sino simplemente salir del país para un, o mi familia salir del país para darme un mejor futuro eh, porque mi futuro, yo, por lo que yo quería hacer, iba a ser aquí, iba a ser en Los Ángeles. Y ya después, obvio, las cosas se pusieron no tan buenas. <risa> so, ahora no es posible regresar a, a, a Venezuela. Todavía tengo familia ahí. Fíjate que mi, una de mis primitas está por aquí. <risa> eh, pero sí, ahí nos mantenemos en contacto, tratamos de dar lo mejor que podemos y ojalá se ponga pronto la cosa, ojalá la cosa se ponga buena pronto. Tengo mucha esperanza de que sí. Quiero que se ponga bueno para mi familia. Y no sé, algún día podré visitar, podré visitar a la familia, podré ver el país, no sé. ¿Ves? Ahí está, ella dice, ya. Yes. Sí, porque en realidad... Mi, yo, mi familia y yo nunca fuimos el tipo de como salir del país y regresar cada año o regresar cada otro mes porque cuando uno se va a ir a otro lugar tiene que, en mi opinión tiene que acostumbrarse al lugar tiene que poner la atención tiene que tratar de vivir en este nuevo lugar no y seguir adelante no siempre tener la misma mentalidad que tú tuviste en tu país y traerla a esta siempre mantener tu cultura y ser orgullosa de donde tú vienes y nunca olvidarte de donde empezaste y de donde naciste pero ya estás en un nuevo lugar, así que hay que tratar de acostumbrarse al ambiente, hacer amigos, aprender esa cultura, etc. <laughs> um, okay, so to everyone that like just heard all of that in Spanish, I was basically talking about, um, someone asked me if every now and then the Venezuelan kind of comes out of me. Um, but the thing is, I voy a traducir lo que acabo de decir, por eso es que estoy hablando en inglés. But um, when I, ca I came out of Venezuela very, very young, um, I was six years old, so I didn't really get to experience much of the culture, I'd say, plus my, all my family's from Cuba. Everyone's from Cuba. And so when I moved to the United States, I moved to Miami, where the 90% of the population is Cuban. And then the most of the time with my friends, I would speak in English, mix it with Spanish, but it was always Cuban Spanish. So that's kind of how that worked out. And I came to LA when I was 13, so I already based my, you know, my really formative years were in Miami around my family's culture, Cuban culture. Although since my parents lived a lot, um, a large amount of years 
in Venezuela, they do have like you know every other like phrase or something, or like they know how to cook other like you know Venezuelan food, and we have it every now and then. Like literally this morning, I had an arepa. Se me olvidó mencionar que literalmente ya que estábamos hablando de eso, yo me comí una arepa esta mañana. <laughs> But um, yeah, <laughs> so I guess yeah, I still it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of like weird because for me it's like I never went back to Venezuela after I left. And it's not in good conditions right now. It's really, really sad what's going on right now. So obviously I can't go back to kind of like visit and see where I had my first six years of um, childhood and where I have really, really good memories. Um, though I wish I could, you know, I wish I could and go see my family and go see you know, and go eat some of the food, and, like, so I definitely, even though the little, little memories I have, sometimes you do miss it, and you know that that's your, that's where you were born, so you kind of want to see it after so many years, um, but, yeah, mainly I think I connect more with my Cuban side, though, just because my whole family, that's what they taught me, that's who they are, I've been to Cuba, um, my sister, like, just recently came from Cuba, so, like, that's even more, like, close now um and i've always just yeah that's where my family's from so that's where my culture is and, I, and i've always said to everyone that like s frowns down upon it of the fact that i came to united states and never went back um what i'll say is i don't want to move back because my future is here and everything that i've worked for is here and i've already I'm accustomed to living here. And if I were to live somewhere else, you know, I would try experience, you know, in Europe or Asia or something like that. Um, but, you know, where I want to work and where my dreams are and everything is here. But don't confuse that with me trying to be American now. Like, I'm American now. I only speak English now. Like, all that bunch of stuff. Because it's not me. And I can't pretend that it is. I'm not interested in doing so. So for me, it's like I'm very much, I was, I grew up with a Cuban uh, family, with the Cuban culture, and that's what I feel comfortable in. That's where I, that's where I gravitate towards. That's where I feel comfortable. That's my people. And so what I can do in the United States, we're all immigrants. So, you know, we bring our culture to this country and we find other people that also, you know, came from Cuba or came from Guatemala or came from wherever. And we try to find our people here and we try to make it in the United States as Latinos or as Asians or as um, Africans or as whatever. So that's kind of everything I like to say, that just because I haven't gone back to my country doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it or that I forgot about it or that I don't care about what is happening in Venezuela or what's happening in Cuba. Um, yeah. en inglés porque tengo que ahora como oye Sean Ryan Fa yo lo vi el otro día lo vi en prom es uno de mis mejores amigos um, ya yeah, lo que estaba diciendo en inglés es porque porque dije como hay muchos que preguntan que por qué no posteo tanto por ejemplo de de como mi vamos a decir de mi familia o de cómo me siento estar en los Estados Unidos todo ese tipo de cosas porque siempre he querido aclarar que um, siempre que he querido aclarar que yo nosotros vinimos a los Estados Unidos para un futuro para un futuro brillante que yo tuviera la libertad de hacer lo que yo quisiera y para mis padres también pudieron hacer cosas que yo también que eran sueños para ellos ese lugar está, en realidad está lleno de oportunidades y yo creo que el resto de mi futuro, el resto de mi carrera, puede ser aquí, puede ser en otros lugares. Um, pero ya nos acostumbramos aquí. Ya tengo mi trabajo aquí. Ya toda mi vida ha sido aquí. Pero obvio, mi cultura es cubana, mi cultura es latina. Y nunca voy a pretender ser americana, ni ser blanca, ni ser X. Porque estoy en este país. Puedo estar en Japón, puedo estar en África, puedo estar en... Yo no puedo pretender ser otra cultura. Puedo aprender de esa cultura, puedo aprender de la gente, pero yo siempre voy a ser latina. 
siempre mi lenguaje va a ser el, eh, el español. Eh, ya, pero entiendo que se me ha ido un poco porque aquí lo que pasa habla que es puro inglés y desde, desde los seis años estoy aquí, pero ahí me defiendo. <ríe> porque en la casa todo lo que hablamos es español. Mis padres son cubanos, así que ellos me, me criaron de la manera que los cri criaron a ellos, con sus costumbres, con su cultura. Y siempre quiero dejar claro que nunca he olvidado mi país, ni de dónde soy, ni tampoco ignoro lo que pasa en, en Venezuela ni en Cuba, eh, porque todavía tengo familia ahí. Pero al mismo tiempo siempre hay que ser positivo, siempre hay que tener esperanza de que lo que pasa en nuestros países todo se va a mejorar, que hay que mandar eh, ayuda a nuestras familias, eh, porque todavía tengo familia ahí, hay que tratar de apoyarlo. Y ojalá que cuando las cosas se pongan mejor uno pueda visitar. Pero bueno, siempre hay que ser positivo y seguir adelante, ya que está uno aquí y hay que tratar de, de seguir adelante y, tra y tratar de hacer... Eh, hacer, un, hacer un futuro exitoso, ojalá. Te amo, eres la mejor. Gracias. She's saying she missed her country. I, I'll be honest, um, I think I miss the people most of all, because I wouldn't want to go back and live there. Um, yeah, because like I said, my future is here. But I do miss, you know, Maybe being surrounded by the people that is, it's my culture, it's my people. They understand all of the, all of the inside jokes. They know how to cook the food. They know all the struggles we go through. They know, they know, you know what I mean? So, for example, here in LA, there's barely any Cubans. So a lot of the times you really miss it. You really miss being surrounded by people who have your same accent or people who cook the same food as you do or have the same inside jokes, all that bunch of stuff. So sometimes you kind of miss that. So a lot of the times I do like going to my parents' uh, country, Cuba, just to be immersed in the culture. And, and I wish, I mean, now Venezuela is going through a really, really tough time. So I cannot go to Venezuela. But if it weren't a good time, you know, and I was at a point where, you know, I'm not working for a while and I can take some time off, I would love to go and kind of see my family and kind of see how it is over there and kind of revisit the places that I remember from when I was like five years old and see how they look now like yeah because I think at one point when you spend so much time in the United States you kind of want to leave <laughs> just for a second because I know here there's a lot of luxury there is a lot of comfort and I am very privileged to be here and to be doing what I love to do and to be acting and to actually have some form of success and have people that support me. But a lot of the times when I travel to somewhere else, that's what I love to do the most because you see the difference in between other cultures and the United States. You see their fortes and you see the disadvantages that United States does have. Because I think a toxic mentality is to think that the United States is the best thing on the planet, it, that there's nothing better than this and that, you know, this is it. You know what I mean? And while the United States is very powerful and it does provide a good place for if you're looking for a successful future and if you want opportunities, this is a great place. But I feel like at the same time it's very toxic sometimes with, within society. I feel like people are very, very liberal and that's a beautiful thing. But the way their liberty was based was by taking the liberty from somebody else. That's what I think. Because I mean... Like, the white Americans did come, and this is to Native Americans. You know, that's why they're called Native Americans. So the other is kind of still... I won't get into that, but I just feel like there's a lot of tension between race. There's a lot of tension in, like, in like they really, really force you to have an identity, even though the whole thing and the whole aesthetic is to not have labels, if you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, it's like... Yeah, if you're Latina, you have to fit this kind of stereotype. If you're black, you have to fit the stereotype. And if you don't fit the usual stereotype, then what the hell are you? It's that kind of deal. So I guess that's the only thing that I don't like about the United States. I'm not fond of the government either, but I'm not going to get into politics because I'm the last one you're going to be having a political conversation with. Um, I'm extremely proud of you, Nelly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cuando viene a México, ay, ojalá pronto. Qué rico es México, qué lindo lugar. Siempre, okay, he ido creo que dos, dos, tres veces. 
tres veces, creo. Dos. No sé, uno por trabajo y otro por... Eh, fui con mi familia. Y es tan lindo el lugar, la gente es tan, tan como... Oh, no sé. Siempre, oh, quiero regresar. Y visitar a todos, visitarlos a todos ustedes. You're gonna see so much my English teacher because she's from Cuba. Well, basically, yeah. ¿Cuántos años tienes Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon tuve... Seis años. Acabé de terminar... Uh, Hice mi último show ahora con ellos, terminamos en enero. So, ahora vamos a ver qué podemos hacer, <laughs> cuál será el próximo paso. I wanted to thank you again for this video. I missed on me a few days ago. I'm so grateful for your support. It means the world. Thank you, thank you. Michelle, I'm always there for you. I love you so much. I'm always here for your progress, to congratulate you and give you gifts and lots of hugs and kisses, virtually, I guess. <laughs> I don't like politics. I want to talk about politics, but not bad things about people in, in politics. I think, I think politics, the other thing, I think politics and religion, I, start, I tr very much try to stay away from. I really do. Just because I feel like a lot of the times I want to reach a common ground with people who have a different uh, belief or who believe differently, you know, regarding politics, but it's just not possible. I think a lot of the times we try to have these conversations and to try to understand each other's point of view, but when there's people in existence that only believe what they believe is right, and if you believe anything else, it is wrong, and it just cannot possibly be the way that you're thinking, and they get so aggressive, and they get so passionate about what they believe, and then you can't reach a common ground. You can't try, even like, because you're talking with people that don't even try to understand the way you think. So for me, this is why I never really talk about politics on social media. Um, if it is, it's something that I'm just very, very passionate about. Um, and religion, I completely stay away from. I don't need to talk about it. Because um, personally, I know I have like an angel on my shirt right now. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm atheist. I don't really believe in any of that. But the thing is, I kind of, I respect every form of religion there is, but there is not a lot of people that think that way sometimes, so, yeah, yeah, no, I, those two topics I stay away from at all times, I'd rather just go to dance, go to my fitness class, which is literally in, like, what time is it? I know I have to be there in a bit. I actually, like, the class, I think, is actually, like, seven or something, but, like, it's kind of far away, so, and traffic in LA is wonderful. So I usually have to leave like at five-ish. I don't even know what time it is. I hope I'm not late, I don't know. ¿Cómo hiciste para aprender inglés? Bueno, vine al país. Yo vine a los Estados Unidos desde muy chiquita. Eso obvio me ayudó mucho ya que todos los niños hablaban inglés y la maestra que yo tenía era americana. Ella en realidad era una dulzura, de verdad que agradezco, eh, ella era un ángel, estoy muy, eh, estoy muy agradecida que ella fue la, la maestra que me tocó, um, porque, eh, pero ya, yeah. in public no one is allowed to talk about politics, religions, only at home in a car, very true, and with your people, there's a couple friends that I can talk about it with, of course these are not conversations that we have all the time, Oh, it's 4.23 for me? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I don't have to leave quite yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I think heavy topics like that I can talk about with my closest friends. And, of course, my family, who kind of thinks the way I do because they raised me. Um, yeah. I think there are a lot of people in L in LA specifically. I noticed that LA is filled with a lot of people that are very free-thinking. Like, they're very open-minded. And, like, for example, there's some who, you know, are, like, this is where I've met people who are very, like, spiritual, and, like, I started meditating when I got here, and it's all about, you know, understanding everybody else's point of view, and kind of striving to get along, and, like, I don't know, I just like the vibe here. When you're in L.A., you're a very nice person, versus the me from New York, which is, I'm sorry, but a total bitch. Like, in, but it's true, like, in New York, you have to be. Like, ugh, like, people just get in your way and tell you the rude, like, the most rude things. And I was like, dude, I totally get you gotta be at work right now, but that's not my fault. 
go on your own way, don't get in mine, and we'll be good. Like, I don't know, in New York you have to be very different, but I like the LA version of me, I'm really nice here. <laughs> um, I'm listening to so much Florence right now, I really hope you don't mind. <laughs> Um, I love your eyes. Thank you. Mm. Do I like K-pop? I really do. I can't pretend I don't. <laughs> um, I started listening to it in like 2009 when uh, G, Bike Girls Generation, came out. Yeah. Deep, dark hole that I never found my way out of. Um, your recent pick on Instagram was beautiful. Thank you. You so cute. Lily! Oh my god. I love every single thing you post. Like literally every caption just makes my day. We need to hang out because we've only seen each other like once. We have to make that a thing. Why do I always play the bad girl? I really like bad characters. I feel like they match me. I can play any character, of course. That's kind of what you want to strive for as an actor, but I feel like my forte, or maybe what comes easiest to me is definitely the bad characters. Like the really cute character, or the leaders, or that are like nice to everyone, they're not as fun. <laughs> I just feel like you can definitely like explore more and just have more fun with the bad characters. Yeah. And I can't lose my edge. Because <laughs> imagine if me coming out a cute character right now. I can't ruin my reputation. I'm artsy. I'm edgy. We need to leave it that way. <laughs> um, I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> I feel like we got all the really hard topics out of the way. That's like me and my, um, let's go to the Getty and be disgustingly aesthetic. Yes! See, this is why I like you. Well, I'm DMing you after this and we're, yeah, we're going. We're doing it. <laughs> That should be fun. I haven't gone to the Getty in so long. I'm being uncultured. I should go. Um, I don't know. Sorry if my, like, if I start, like, like, um, blocking the mic, it's because I'm, like, have to hold my phone in a specific way because I have my charger on, so. I really hate Apple for doing us so dirty and literally having the charger, the headphones, all that bunch of stuff, like, in all in one plug-in, like. You know what I miss? You and Jordan content. Dude, so do I. How, how about you tell Jordan to come back from freaking Australia? No, no, no. Even better. Let's have Jordan. Sorry, low battery. I don't know why it says low battery. Oh, I think it's because it, now it got to 20%. So it's saying that it's on 20%. I don't know. Yeah, somebody tell Jordan to pay for my flight. Uh, all the way to Australia. Um, no connecting. Just whoo, straight there. Um, no return. Um, if I can live in Australia, that'd be great. Uh, with Jordan, even better. <laughs> um, yeah, I miss Jordan. She's literally my favorite person. Like, do you have no idea how refreshing it is to spend time with her and talk to her and talk to someone who is like a human being and gets other human beings like she's just great she's just a, a, an enlightened being you know what I mean I just love her I just love everything about her and I miss her and she's probably not coming back in a really long time <laughs> make a stop in Amsterdam pick me up girl I will <laughs> I'm so sad that all of the time I, I went two times to Amsterdam when I went to Malta and it was all connecting but it wasn't like oh it's like in between three hours so I could get on a taxi and just you know drive around the place and see it and see people it was like buy a souvenirs in the airport and then leave <laughs> so I was like yeah I was sad that I couldn't see because I, I have a lot of like a lot of you guys are from Amsterdam so and like a lot of like ones that have stuck with me for a long time so I wish I could have like seen y'all Michelle, Madea, etc <laughs> so but I couldn't I'm sorry all you guys love putting emojis do you not realize that I can't respond to an emoji like what the hell am I supposed to say to a just go like what the heck <laughs> Write something so I can respond and I don't have to like be staring at my screen awkwardly for the next minute. Tiene uh... hermoso cabello. Gracias. I'm hungry. Oh, dude, I haven't eaten. 
bro. <laughs> I no, uh, dude, did I really not eat? <gasps> no, I have to eat right now. Like I, oh, I have my like exercise, dude. Okay, literally, what day is it today? Wednesday. The class is at. Shit, what time is it at? I'm having an ex. I'm having an existential crisis. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, wait. Like, give me a second. I, I'm going to figure this out. Um, today's Wednesday. So today the dance class is at 7, right? So we got to be there at 7 because sis is going to dance class. So we got to be at 7, then we're probably going to leave at 6. Okay, then I should eat right now. Because <laughs> I cannot go to that exercise class without eating. Like, I'll literally faint. And I do not recommend it to any of you. Please eat, like, at least an hour before you're doing... Gym, Zumba, whatever it is you do. Tuesday? Today's Tuesday? Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, damn it. Today's Tuesday? <laughs> that just messed me up. No, I think I still need to leave at the same time. Oh, okay. Dude, all right. Let me do this again. <laughs> Tuesday, dance class. Okay, wait. Okay, Tuesday, the class, the dance class is at 7, is at 8, we're going to go, okay, it's the same thing, I, okay, I had mixed it up, all of the scheduling that I said was for Wednesday is actually for Tuesday, so we're good, if I eat right now, I'll be dope, I'll be good to go, this week feels so off, I literally, I have like three freaking calendars, dude, and I don't look at any of them, I'm, like, this existential crisis that you just saw going on right now, that's an everyday thing. Sometimes it's in Spanish, sometimes it's in English, sometimes it's in Korean. I don't know. Um, what's up with dude every time? It's a, yeah, it's a thing. Like, for example, when I went to, okay, when I went, when I came to LA, I didn't notice the amount of different things there are between Miami and LA. One of those things is how you speak. The accent here is very, like, we can go, yeah, we can totally go. I mean, it's fine. Like, we should totally be able to do that. There's a, I'm not kidding. There's a bunch of people that speak that way, dude. And in Miami, I guess you speak a little bit more how I do. I think people speak with a lot more, like, position and, like, because the majority of people are Cubans. It's very in your face. Um, don't worry. We're nice. Um, and so in Miami, we use a lot of words like bro and dude and and refi but <laughs> y'all don't need to know that one <laughs> but um yeah that's more of a cultural thing you don't need to say it but <laughs> like we say a lot of, like bro dude and it's pretty much everybody it's and of course all the spanish ones like niña niño or whatever but it's for both guys and girls and when i got here I met, like, the typical girls that I would be like, oh, bro, I didn't even know that. And then it'd be like, don't call me bro, I'm not a dude, or, like, I'm not a guy. And I was like, hi, okay, gringa, whatever. And I was like, all right. Us Cubans are not always nice, though. That's true. <laughs> I'm sorry. But when we need to be, we're cool when we need to be. But then we're in your face. For me, I would probably be not so nice or be in somebody's face when somebody's asking me too many questions because you like if you're cuban you know or if you're latino in general you know of the adults or the people that ask too many questions like how oh, oh my god and they greet you like this i'm gonna say it in english so all you guys can understand our point of view but this is kind of how it goes if you go to all the family gatherings or you go to your um parents friends party where everybody's in there then it's like, oh my god, look at you, you've grown so much, you look so pretty, wow, like, how are you, how is school, do you have a boyfriend, oh my god, well, how come you don't have a boyfriend, because I don't want to have one, <laughs> simple as that, damn, like, why are you coming out for me, like, I was like, how, how is school doing, great, do you have any friends, why do you care, <laughs> like, it's just, they ask so much about your personal life, and I'm just like, this is not bonding. Like, you could just ask me, hey, how are you? How have you been? Like, what's, you know, tell me what's going on. And then I can choose to tell you what's going on with my life. You know what I mean? I don't know. Would you ever, like, junk lovers think? My parents were never the type, actually. I, but they were, they would say the chancleta. 
Because in Cuba, we don't say chancla, we say chancleta. So, yeah, if I, yeah, if I was being like an obnoxious child, it was more like tapaboca. <laughs> because I would never do any, I was never like a really, really like obnoxious child. And I would never really give my parents a really hard time. I was just very energetic. But not necessarily like do something they told me I shouldn't do. Um, and if I did, it was kind of like they would sit down with me and talk with me and explain why what I did was wrong in a very like, you know, intense way. So you would receive the message um, and tell you, and, you know, tell me why I shouldn't do it, why I shouldn't do it again, kind of do, and all that bunch of stuff. Of course, you you just leave feeling super disappointed in yourself that you disappointed your parents. You didn't bring any honor to your freaking Hispanic family. But the only time. Yeah, the only what they would uh, threaten me with was like tapaboca. <laughs> so that's usually if I said something way out of line or I'm being a little too comfortable, and it sounded disrespectful. It's kind of like a, like a like a pot to the mouth kind of deal. That's what they would aim at me for. And the only thing, I, the only other thing was like maybe a chancleta. But of course, that was that was all words. They were never actually like gonna do it. But qué tan estrictos fueron tus padres. Yo creo que son bastante estrictos, pero en realidad todo es por mi bien. Como todo en realidad fue hecho con mucho amor, porque me quieren guiar. Toda la cantidad de cosas que yo hice que no... O sea, por eso es que cuando yo crecí, cuando yo era joven, en realidad nunca me metía en problemas. Eh, era un balance de que me enseñaron a ser fuerte y me enseñaron de manera... Sí, con reglas, estricto, claro, pero con mucho amor. So, esa es la idea que tu chiquito sepa por qué, o sea, cuáles son las cosas que no debe hacer, por qué no las debe hacer, porque el, el por qué es muy importante, y si lo hace, cuáles son las consecuencias, todo ese tipo de cosas. Y, y para mí, como no soy padre, obvio, pero como dice mi padre, que pegarle a tu hijo y darle, o sea, eso no le enseña nada. Como de, tener miedo de hacer las cosas porque te van a dar, eso es lo peor. Tú tienes que, como por ejemplo, no ponerte borracho, o no fumar, o no sé qué cosa. Todas esas cosas las tienes que no hacer porque simplemente tú no quieres hacerlo. Tú sabes que es malo para ti. Tú sabes cuáles son las consecuencias. Para mí siempre me dijeron cómo es, cómo es el mundo, qué es lo que hay en este mundo, qué tipo de personas hay en este mundo. Para ellos reconocerlo y ellos decirme, esto es lo bueno, esto es lo malo. Ahora, yo te he presentado todo esto, ahora tú decides el camino que tú quieres coger. Pero ten mucho cuidado con el camino que quieres escoger. So, para mí esa fue la manera que, que me enseñaron. Para, comparada como es la cultura aquí americana, definitivamente mis padres son 10 veces más estrictos que los padres americanos, o no todos, obvio. Um, pero sí están todo el tiempo al lado mío, o sea, yo tengo ya, voy a cumplir 19 años y yo tengo mi trabajo, tengo todo eso, pero ellos van, ella, mi mamá, mi abuela, mi papá, ellos van conmigo a todos lados, me llevan a todos lados, ellos saben todo lo que está pasando, todo lo que yo quiero decir, se los digo. O sea, hay mucha confianza, hay mucha... Hay mucho amor. Eso es, es, es muy bueno. Yo siempre me sentí que como esto era un régimen militar, pero con mucho amor. <risa> eh, cuando vengas a Venezuela deberías ir a Mérida, es hermoso. Ah, ok. Lo voy a pensar. <risa> Te veo ahí. Um... You have a big head. <laughs> a big hair, that's what I do. <laughs> Will you become a YouTuber and a dancer? Awesome, speaking in other languages. Love you. Speak other languages on your uh, on your lives all the time. I will. Um, I am learning more languages. That's definitely something I'll do. Um, currently, I'm speaking Korean. I'll explain why. Um, at 18, 19, I made it a goal for myself to learn my third language. Hi, Javier. Hi, Victor. Saludos para todos. Um, but yeah, so at 18, I promised myself and I made it a thing where like you have to go and at least start learning your third language. And I had to decide what I wanted. So I was going to do French, but um, the thing is French is very, it's a... It comes from very similar beginnings and origins as, for example, Spanish. And even sometimes a bit of English can help with it. So a lot of the times I thought about it and I was like, well, French is going to be relatively easy and similar to 
my base, my, you know, the languages that I have as a base. I, so I was like, okay, while I'm young, I really, really want to learn a language that's completely has nothing to do with Spanish or English, something totally different, something I can use, and something that's a challenge, you know what I mean? So I can already have that down. So I thought about, like, okay, let's go far. Let's, I don't know, what, what are some popular... Um, Languages. The next one was Chinese, Mandarin Chinese that I was actually going to learn in sixth grade, but they didn't end up doing the class because not enough um, kids signed up for it. And I felt very sad because I was one of the kids that did sign up for it. But then when I got into it, I was like, this is really hard. And I was like, I didn't have anyone to help me, though. Like, I didn't have any friends to practice with. Um, there's not, I mean, there's always content on Netflix and um, songs you can listen to. Um, but it wasn't going to be the same because I wasn't going to have anyone to speak it with. So I might, you know, be able to understand it, but not speak it. And I was like, well, in the end, where am I going to use it? Because I'm not going to be able to use it in my job or elsewhere. So I was like, okay, maybe let's put this one on the back burner. And I was like, another one that interested me, interested me was Korean. Because I have been listening to the musical for a very long time and have watched the um, their stuff for a very long time. So I, there was already things that I was, always, uh, that I was already familiar with. And I was like, well... This is something that's really, really different and that I have the resources and that I have friends that speak it that can help me. And a lot of times um, where I dance, it's all in circa downtown, but more Korea town. So obviously there's a lot of people that are Korean there. And I was like, I made a lot of friends there. They can help me with this. I was like, you know what? Let's learn this one and let's see how it goes. And I was like, it'd be really cool to... Um, learn the language of one of the songs that I listen to or, or one of the music I listen to because I listen to music that's Russian, that's Korean, that's French, that's whatever. As long as it's good, I'll listen to it. But this one was like, well, the most I think is like that I listen to is English, Spanish, and Korean. So I was like, okay, why not have that down? So I'm taking that right now. Um, I definitely would recommend doing it with a teacher, um, someone that actually is Korean <laughs> rather than or has a Korean family rather than like here in the States, I wouldn't recommend it like in learning any language in school. Like literally just go to a language school and see what, you know, what teachers have to offer. Um, Cause my teacher is super, super freaking nice. She's so cool about everything. She's young, so she knows all the slang too. She's teaching me all the Korean slang. And I was like, hey, I was like, I'm gonna pop up with my friends and I'm gonna just be speaking fluently. <laughs> But, I, yeah, no. It's really fun. It's really, and it's actually, my Spanish has helped me a lot, weirdly enough. Um, and then English, too, because as Korean gets more modern, they get a lot of influence, American influence and English influence. So, for example, if you want to say sofa, they don't have a, the F sound. In Korean, they say sopa. <laughs> Which, for me, I can pronounce because in Spanish, sopa is soup. So... And then with my English, that helps me because how do you say sofa in English? Sofa. So, yeah, there's a lot of words that are my teacher, and I think they call it Konglish, where it's like Spanglish, but Korean and English. So a lot of those are really easy for me because it's basically just an English word with a Korean twist. So those were really easy to learn, but there are definitely some ones that... Vocabulary is really easy for me, you know, because I keep... Um, revising it and studying it um, and then I'm good on a few sentences and then I'm getting better at speaking it because I can translate relatively quickly now which is really cool like in real time speaking with someone and translating what they say in your head but I just have to form my sentences and say it in a quicker way because <laughs> it's taking me way too long right now <laughs> But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm beginning, so hopefully I'll, I don't know, I'll get to travel there or I'll get, or I'll be less shy with people so I can talk to more people and make more friends that speak it so I can practice. But we'll see how it goes. Would you marry a Korean guy? Honestly, I don't know about marriage. I, I think I'm too young. First of all, right now I'm too young for marriage. Uh, marriage is probably not going to be my plans for like 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to get married. That's a thing. But honestly, for me, once I pass my type 
a lot of say like, oh, because you like K-pop, so you probably like Korean guys, or like, oh, you're Latina, so you're only gonna get like a Latino guy or something like that, or like you're in the United States, you only go for white guys or whatever. And to me, it's like my type doesn't necessarily have anything to do with physical. It's just someone that you click with, because I feel like if you start listing all these things that you want out of somebody, like I want these type of eyes, and I want them to have this color hair, and I want them to be like this, and I want them to be like that, you're limiting yourself from having a connection with people, you know what I mean? Um, so I think in the end you just have to know how you want to be treated, what type of treatment you expect from this person, what kind of um, personalities you gravitate to, and really pay attention to who the person is, not what the person looks like. So I think that's the big it thing for me. Um, yeah, so. Um, oh wait, can you hear me right now? I think I had my, I was covering the mic. I'm blocking the speaker. Is it now, can you hear me? Save this live, people need to hear that. <laughs> no? Yes, okay. It's okay, all right, go, go, go. Okay, but is it there or is it back? Like, okay. Loud and clear, okay, cool. Good to know. I think I was blocking the mic, sorry about that. Um, I thought I'd the microphone, sorry. Oh yeah, what I was saying is that, personally, I'm not, um, I'm not into open relationships. I never really was, and never really, I am not. So for me, it's like if I'm gonna be in a relationship, it's gonna be something that's very, very committed. It's a lot of commitment. It's a lot of like, you know, it's you and me, we a team, we're in this for the long run, or we're gonna try to be, we're gonna be respectful, we're gonna be loving, we're gonna be dope partners, and we're gonna help each other out, you know what I mean? And not make life complicated for each other. So that's for me. I feel like if love isn't that, then why would you want it? If that's not what you strive for, then why would you, you know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's just, if I was going to, love your Cupid shirt, and I love you, Kevin! Oh my God, I miss you, we need to go somewhere. Um, so for me, it's like for my teen years, um, that I guess kind of are passing or already passed, ew. Um, and now of my young adult years, my main priority is to kind of focus on my career and focus on my future and setting that platform for myself and making myself feel successful and making myself and making me proud and making, of course, making my family proud and bringing honor to them, but it's, um... So I guess relationships really isn't something that I care about. Um, I think for me it happens, you know, when it happens, it happens. I think that's the kind of thing that you don't look for. It's just you had a con connection with someone and that was that. And you try to strive for it and you see where it goes. Um, so personally, I have never been in a relationship. So obviously I'm not a master and I can tell you all these things, but that's kind of my take on it. I'm very happy by myself. I'm happy with my own company. I think that's very important to have, to love yourself as you are, to be happy with yourself, to be happy with what you're doing and be in your own company and love your own space and respect your own space so you can focus on where you wanna go. Because I feel like for me, a relationship would probably be ideal when I'm older, more mature, that I have set a platform for myself, that I'm stable, I guess, like in my job, that I'm doing something that I love. And then, I, you know, at that point, it's something that I can share with a partner that I'm ready to share. Because I think at this point, I kind of like this going on. I kind of like, it's, you know, me. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I like. Yeah, so for now, it's me and my family, and I'm happy with that. And my friends, because I get to hang out with my friends all the time, so that's dope. Um, 
And if there's eye candy at the party, you can you can look, you can appreciate the art, and that's that. <laughs> no harm in it. Um, okay, lo que estaba diciendo en inglés para decir en español me preguntaron sobre relaciones y en realidad yo soy muy privada con todo eso. Um, lo que voy a decir es que yo nunca he, he estado en una, así que porque lo que quería explicar es que para mí y pienso que esta es una manera de pensar que tal vez puede ayudar a otras personas. Porque para mí yo creo que cuando somos jóvenes, cuando somos adolescentes o cuando ya estamos cumpliendo los 20 años, por ahí, nos enfocamos demasiado en las relaciones, en estar con alguien, en pensar que, oh my God, si no tenemos a alguien, ay, no tengo novio, no tengo novia, qué patético, qué esto, qué lo otro. Porque pensamos demasiado en los demás, y en las vidas de los demás, y en, ay, qué lindo, ellos fueron aquí, ellos fueron allá, ay, él le regaló esto, ella le hizo esto. Hay que vivir la vida de uno, caballero. Hay que enfocarse en uno. So, para mí, desde chiquita, cuando los años de, por ejemplo, que yo era niña, adolescente, mi focus era mi carrera, era estar aquí, era, por un momento era, en un momento era aprender inglés, lo otro era ser amigos, el otro era socializar con la gente, aprender la cultura, en otro momento, ya desde ese momento, como a los 13 o en realidad los nueve años en adelante siempre ha sido enfocada en mi carrera en, en mi futuro en hacer una plataforma para yo eh, tener mi trabajo, pagar mi renta eh, ayudar a mi familia todo ese tipo de cosas ah, en realidad había muchas cosas que eran más importantes para mí que tener un novio eh, so, yo todos estos años Nunca tuve una relación, nunca tuve un sí, un no con nadie, nunca nada. Siempre estaba enfocada en mí, en, mi, en lo que me hace a mí feliz, que es mi trabajo, es actuar. Eh, he pasado tiempo con mis amigos, con mis amigas, he pasado tiempo con mi familia. Y eso para mí es lo mejor que hay. Pero lo que más ha ido sobre todo es ser feliz con ti mismo, amarte a ti mismo, amar tu espacio, tener tu espacio. Eh, Um, con lo que, con, sorry, estaba leyendo algunos comentarios eh, Porque cuando estás feliz solo, estás feliz con ti mismo No necesitas eh, aprobación, será esa la palabra, de los demás No necesitas como ese sí, ese, ese de los demás No necesitas validation, vamos a decir Ahora se me está yendo, ay qué pena Pero... No buscas que la gente te acepte Porque tú te aceptas a ti mismo eres, in, eres individual, eres independiente Eres feliz con tus decisiones Eres feliz con ti mismo, con tu cuerpo, con tu cara Con tu con todo Y te enfocas en ti mismo, enfocas en lo que tú quieres Enfocas en, en tu trabajo ¿Qué quieres hacer con tu vida? ¿Dónde quiero yo trabajar? ¿Qué quiero hacer yo? Y entonces todo ese tiempo lo, lo pasas rico Porque Estás saliendo con amigos, estás pasando tiempo con familia, y entonces cuando necesitas estar solo, estás solo, y estás feliz solo. Porque para mí, vivir para los demás, vivir tratando de hacer a los demás feliz, o queriendo tener la vida de los demás es lo peor que hay. Si no vives para ti, no es vida. So, por eso yo nunca me enfoqué en relaciones, porque nunca sentí que necesitaba ese tipo de compañía. Eh, yo estoy feliz sola <risa> Si algún día tengo una conexión con alguien Y es algo lindo que, 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 que uno quiere que crezca Muy bien En ese momento, ese era el momento Ese es el tiempo para eso Vino cuando tuvo que venir Pero hasta ahora no he sentido Esa conexión con nadie Y yo he sido muy feliz Pasando tiempo con mis amigos Pasando tiempo con mi familia Pasando tiempo con mí misma So, quería dejarles con eso, porque sé que muchas veces cuando están en la escuela, cuando están en la universidad, entonces piensan, ay, que mi, eh, mis amigos han dicho esto, eso es la única que no tengo eh, novio, no tengo novia, hay que pena. No, 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 pena nada, ni, ni vergüenza, ni nada. Usted hace lo que usted quiera. Usted, si es feliz solo, es feliz solo, y nadie te puede decir que no. Uno busca su, su felicidad a su manera. So, pero para mí lo que ha sido saludable para mí es eso. Basically, everything that I said in English about loving yourself and being happy in your own company and not desperately needing your relationship and all that bunch of stuff, that's basically all I said in Spanish. Um, ahora faltan 30 segundos, me tengo que ir porque ya Instagram dijo, ya niña, hablaste demasiado, vete. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, me tengo que ir, muchas gracias por ver este live Ojalá pueda hacer algo de esto pronto Yo sé que hago muy pocos de estos Pero ojalá los puedo ver pronto y chatear con ustedes pronto Que tengan un buen día, los quiero mucho Estoy muy agradecida por su apoyo um, I have 17 seconds left Instagram hates me, telling me Girl, you, stop, you talk too much, you need to go um, So yeah, I love you I'm very grateful for you I hope you have an amazing day I hope I can do one of these soon And yeah, I'm gonna go eat now Bye